Hi everybody, welcome to another Blackstone Fortress update video. So, today we're doing, today is the Purifier. Space Pope, basically. That's what he's been called a lot on the internet, and I think that that's totally fair because he definitely looks like a Space Pope. But honestly, I was really looking forward to painting him and he did not disappoint. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So we start off with our Zenithal highlight, and this really, you know, when I talk about it being a map of what the model is going to look like, it's really about not losing detail. It's really easy to kind of lose track of, of little bits in there, so this just helps highlight everything and make it easier to see. So what we're doing here is we're just painting in the metallics really quick, we're just spraying them down. Just the gold at first. The silver we're actually going to brush on. Again, this is Vallejo liquid metal. It's awesome. It's like painting water. After that, we go in with a white gray from Vallejo Model Air. This is like my favorite white color to use because it's so reliable. And we just go in and do a base coat over all of the robes. For the sash going down the front and the trim on the robes, I use a burnt red just to create a base tone that works really well. Honestly, I've been painting red for about 10 years now because I've been playing primarily Blood Angels, so red, red comes pretty naturally to me. With the burgundy wine color, I go in and start staining the, I don't know, strips of, of the scarf, I guess it is. This is a really transparent color, and when I say stain, I'm not kidding. It takes a couple coats just to get this to really look fully purple and stop seeing some of that gold underneath it. But I love the way that it goes on, and it creates an excellent base for subsequent layers. With just a very simple charcoal black, we go in and just lay down a simple, simple layer of black on the boots. We're not spending a lot of time on those. We're also putting a little bit of black on some of the hoses, particularly on the servitor and around his neck. There's these hose things going around his chest piece, I guess. I didn't get to show it on camera because the footage didn't take, but I went in and used an airbrush to give a lower shadow pass of Seraphim Sepia. This, this just really helps me push some of those shadows. It does make him look very brown and very, very warm. We're gonna go in and add some more of that warm gray back on top of that warm white gray, just to start adding in some of those, those highlights on his robes. You know, despite the last model where I really struggled with the white, I feel really comfortable in the warm white range because it, it's very forgiving. It doesn't have to be as bright white. In this case, it's a very earthy earthy, warm white, and for some reason I find that a little bit easier to work with. I probably put in like 20 coats of very thin layers of white just to get these robes all set and squared away by the time all this was done. Just trying to make sure that the transitions between the sepia tone and the white were really smooth and it was really letting the model read very well. After that, I went in and did what I would call just a standard skin job. Bugman's Glow over the face, Rykon Flesh Shade, uh, Cadian Flesh Tone, and Kislev Flesh. Really nothing special there. Started going in with a little bit of purple over the vestments, I guess I'll call them the purple vestments. And I just went progressively lighter and lighter and pushed towards a, almost a magenta just to kind of brighten up and enrich those colors. I will knock this back with shades later but for right now I needed it to pop a bit more. So here we're going in with some Rikon Flesh Shade, and this is about darkening up and really, really warming some of those regions on the armor. This is like the first pass. I think I do a total of three washes on this gold overall. This first one is about just helping to find those recesses and add, just, just pushing the fact that it's gold before we make it much more intense with other other washes.
I go in and start highlighting some of the, with some of the red on the on the uh, red satin scarf, as well as some of the sleeves. And in this case, I'm being more selective and really focusing on where the light would be hitting, assuming kind of a top-down light. I'm also not just pushing brighter, but a little bit more saturated as well. I use a light tan to go over the leather, followed up by Agrax Earthshade. This I do, I think, like three or four different coats of, just to start uh, enriching it and pushing it towards that color. I find that when it comes to leather, the more it has a little bit of translucency to its structure that's supplied by washes, it tends to look a little bit better, more realistic. After that, I start going in with a contrast paint, the Silicanum Gray, to start adding a lot of light and dark contrast to our warm gold that we did in a previous step. The Silicanum Gray is my almost complete replacement for Nolan Oil. It does everything that Nolan Oil does, but better. I use this in a very detailed way to really add contrast to some of those smaller, flatter bits, just so that they pop out a little bit more. Some of those edges seem a little bit deeper. And really this is just about defining those shapes and volumes a little bit better by adding a little bit of darkness. I go in and apply this over the leather as well because contrast paints have almost a, a translucency that in most cases I find really obnoxious, but I find I like it overall. After that, over the lower portions of the gold, I go over it with a Druki Violet, and that makes it some of the sexiest gold you can. It gives it this really aged, worn appearance. And I think that it just looks so much better than a flat uh, gold to Reichland flesh shade uh, violet. I think it works so much better. Really the important part is getting that gradient. It, it not just provides an extra layer of darkness, but also some color contrast as well. Purple and yellow contrast well together, so it just adds an extra layer of depth. After that, I go back in with some gold. Now, here's why I do gold first in most cases, because it's messy. In this case, I've splodged a little bit on the gold on that uh, right shoulder blade. Now, with the washes and the basilicum gray, I know I can go back and clean it up, but if you look on the other one, I'm much tighter and more precise with that gold. And, you know, that, these are like the, the finishing stages. Of, of getting that gold the way that I really want it to be. And with that, model done. Like most other models in this range, I am super pleased with how this turned out. I... I found him intimidating, and I was up to the challenge. Um, he works, and frankly, I wish... I had more guys like this to paint. He kind of makes me want to do Sisters of Battle and other Ministorum priests um, because I, I just really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and leave a like. If you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with a bell icon right next to it. I put out videos about once a week and I, I love doing it. I love getting your comments. You can always ask me anything down in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your viewership. This has been Synthetic Black. We'll catch you next time.